candide by voltaire chapter eleven history of the old woman i hate not always bleared eyes and red eyelids neither did my nose always touch my chin nor was i always a servant i am the daughter of pope urban the tenth and of the princess of palestrina until the age of fourteen i was brought up in a palace to which all the castles of your german barons would scarcely have served for stables and one of my robes was worth more than all the magnificence of westphalia as i grew up i improved in beauty wit and every graceful accomplishment in the midst of pleasures hopes and respectful homage already i inspired love my throat was formed and such a throat white firm shaped like that of the venus of medici and what eyes what eyelids what black eyebrows such flames darted from my dark pupils that they eclipsed the scintillation of the stars as i was told by the poets in our part of the world my waiting women when dressing and undressing me used to fall into an ecstasy whether they viewed me before or behind how glad would the gentlemen have been to perform that office for them <laughs> i was affianced to the most excellent prince of massa carrara such a prince as handsome as myself sweet-tempered agreeable brilliantly witty and sparkling with love i loved him as one loves for the first time with idolatry with transport the nuptials were prepared there was surprising pomp and magnificence there were fetes carousals continual opera buff and all italy composed sonnets in my praise though not one of them was passable i was just upon the point of reaching the summit of bliss when an old marchioness who had been mistress to the prince my husband invited him to drink chocolate with her he died in less than two hours of most terrible convulsions but this is only a bagatelle my mother in despair and scarcely less afflicted than myself determined to absent herself for some time from so fatal a place she had a very fine estate in the neighbourhood of gaeta we embarked on board a galley of the country which was gilded like the great altar of st peter's at rome a corsair swooped down and boarded us our men defended themselves like the pope's soldiers they flung themselves upon their knees and threw down their arms begging of the corsair an absolution in articulo mortis instantly they were stripped as bare as monkeys my mother our maids of honour and myself were all served in the same manner it is amazing with what expedition those gentry undress people but what surprised me most was that they thrust their fingers into the part of our bodies which the generality of women suffer no other instrument but pipes to enter it appeared to me a very strange kind of ceremony but thus one judges of things when one has not seen the world i afterwards learned that it was to try whether we had concealed any diamonds this is the practice established from time immemorial among civilized nations that scour the seas i was informed that the very religious knights of malta never fail to make this search when they take any turkish prisoners of either sex it is a law of nations from which they never deviate i need not tell you how great a hardship it was for a young princess and her mother to be made slaves and carried to morocco you may easily imagine all we had to suffer on board the pirate vessel my mother was still very handsome our maids of honour and even our waiting women had more charms than are to be found in all africa as for myself i was ravishing was exquisite grace itself and i was a virgin i did not remain so long this flower which had been reserved for the handsome prince of massa carrara was plucked by the corsair captain he was an abominable negro and yet believed that he did me a great deal of honour 
certainly the princess of palestrina and myself must have been very strong to go through all that we experienced until our arrival in morocco but let us pass on these are such common things as not to be worth mentioning morocco swam in blood when we arrived fifty sons of the emperor muley ismail had each their adherents this produced fifty civil wars of blacks against blacks and blacks against tawnies and tawnies against tawnies and mulattoes against mulattoes in short it was a continual carnage throughout the empire no sooner were we landed than the blacks of a contrary faction to that of my captain attempted to rob him of his booty next to jewels and gold we were the most valuable things he had i was witness to such a battle as you have never seen in your european climates the northern nations have not that heat in their blood nor that raging lust for women so common in africa it seems that you europeans have only milk in your veins but it is vitriol it is fire which runs in those of the inhabitants of mount atlas and the neighboring countries they fought with the fury of the lions tigers and serpents of the country to see who should have us a moor seized my mother by the right arm while my captain's lieutenant held her by the left a moorish soldier had hold of her by one leg and one of our corsairs held her by the other thus almost all our women were drawn in quarters by four men my captain concealed me behind him and with his drawn scimitar cut and slashed every one that opposed his fury at length i saw all our italian women and my mother herself torn mangled massacred by the monsters who disputed over them the slaves my companions those who had taken them soldiers sailors blacks whites mulattoes and at last my captain all were killed and i remained dying on a heap of dead such scenes as this were transacted through an extent of three hundred leagues and yet they never missed the five prayers a day ordained by Mohammed. With difficulty I disengaged myself from such a heap of slaughtered bodies and crawled to a large orange tree on the bank of a neighboring rivulet, where I fell, oppressed with fright, fatigue, horror, despair, and hunger. Immediately after, my senses, overpowered, gave themselves up to sleep which was yet more swooning than repose. I was in this state of weakness and insensibility between life and death when I felt myself pressed by something that moved upon my body. I opened my eyes and saw a white man of good countenance who sighed and who said between his teeth, O che sigura de sere senza coglioni. End chapter 11